Okay, uh, welcome back. Today we'll start talking about uh, functions. So, the most familiar examples of functions are what we would call functions from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. And the most familiar pictorial representation of course is as a graph. So, this is how we mostly think of functions. And what this really means of course is for each value of x there is the function value f of x is what is denoted along the y axis. So, the point here is just x comma f of x and we just join all these points x comma f of x as x takes all possible real values. So, recall that the formal definition of a function requires two sets there is a domain and a codomain. So, in this example both domain and codomain are just the set of real numbers and what we really want to say is uh, well here are the various points of the domain the function is thought of as mapping each point of the domain to some point of the codomain. So, now of course, a natural question we might ask is well what does the function do to subsets of the domain. So, for instance you pick out some chosen subset of the domain and ask what do all the points in this subset map to under the function. So, you just collect together the images of points which come from the chosen subset and put them together and ask what set is this. Okay, so, this is often a very natural and uh, instructive way of looking at functions beyond just what it does to points you also sort of want to think of it uh, in terms of what it does to regions or what it does to various subsets of the domain. So, let us try and do this for the for the familiar function from the real numbers to the real numbers. So, the question here we will ask is what does a function typically do to a set of the following form to an interval. Okay. So, what does this mean what I want to do is the following I want to take an interval closed interval a b this just means the set of all real numbers which lie between a and b including the two end points both a and b. Okay, so, here we do include a and b and now the question is what are the images of uh, the points in this interval under the function. So, now we will think of a function as being a map from the real numbers to the real numbers and ask well you know collect together what it does to the various points in this interval and ask what sort of set does one get on the right hand side. Okay. So, if we call this interval as i so the question here really is the following what is the image of i under f. Okay. So, let us try and answer this more or less from the, the graph of the function. So, what we will do is so, imagine there is some graph function f and we just pick some interval uh, pretty much any interval will do. So, let us take for instance the interval between a and b which is a and that is b. So, what values does the function take when x ranges between a and b. So, we will just uh, write down all the y values. So, pictorially the lengths of these vertical lines indicate the values of f as x varies between a and b. So, we ask well what are the, the various values that uh, the function takes. So, here is what it seems to be from this graph there seems to be a maximum value. So, there is this largest vertical line. So, this maximum value let us call this maximum y value as m there is a minimum y value let us call it small m and observe that between capital N m and small m any choice of y value is always taken by f. So, you pick any y value between capital M and small m let us say this number let us call it y or maybe we will call it c and we ask does the function take the value c and we notice yes it does. So, here is uh, a, a choice of x at which it takes a value c and in fact there is another choice of x uh, let us see. So, here could be a, a choice of x, but this this value of x here does not lie within this interval. So, we do not worry about this one. Okay, so, the only there seems to be just a single value of x is this guy here let us call it x naught at which the function takes the value c. Okay. So, in general there could be more than one value of x, but the key point here is the following observe that 
from this graph at least it seems that if I take the function f and I take the image of the interval i. So, here is here is how one writes this. So, you take the interval between a and b and when we write f of the interval a b this just means the, the uh, image of the interval under the map f. So, in this example at least it seems to be the following it is all values between small m and capital M. Okay. So, at least in this example this, this seems to be true. So, you just figure out the maximum you figure out what the minimum is and every value between them is taken by f okay. and that is exactly the, the image of this interval. Now, what is the key property of the function f which makes this true? So, why is this really true? So, here is an example of a function for which this may not be true. Okay. For the graph that I drew it, it happens to be correct. Now, let us do the following let us take another example. So, write out the, the formula for the function f of x equals well it is defined in two pieces it is the value x if x is positive and it is the value x minus 1 if x is negative. So, it is a piecewise defined function and if you draw the graph of this function here is what one finds uh, it is just the, the graph of the line y equals x. So, this is the graph of the function when x is positive and when x is negative it is more or less the same line just shifted down by 1. Okay. So, it is it is the here is the graph and the key point observe is that this point here where the, the bottom line meets the y axis is not on the graph. So, we often denote it by uh, a circle like that and this is sometimes shaded in to indicate that this point is on the graph. Okay. So, what we now have here is the graph of this function f and now we could ask the same question if I take an interval. So, let us say take the interval between minus 1 and plus 1. So, just consider this closed interval here and ask well what are all the y values what are all the values of the function when x ranges over this interval. So, we do the same thing we draw all the. So, here are the various y values that you get and when x sort of ranges in the positive side at x equal to 0 you get this point here and then you get these vertical lines. So, these are the various y values that you obtain and now again ob observe that the maximum value is a 1 the minimum value is in fact a minus 2 right. So, those are the maximum and minimum values, but here is a key difference as compared to the previous case the values of y between 0 and minus 1. So, these y values so you take any y value between 0 and minus 1 those y values are never attained by this function in this interval. Okay. So, for instance if I take y equals minus half and ask well what value of x would possibly give me a value of minus half. So, I just draw this horizontal line and ask does this horizontal line meet the graph of this function at all okay. and I find that of course, it does not right. So, here is a function for which the what is the. So, if I take the interval i in this case to be the interval between minus 1 and 1 and ask what is the image of f what is the image of i under f the answer seems to be the following I get well of course, the y values here are I, everything between 0 and 1 certainly occurs. So, it is the set of all x. So, here is here is one way of writing this it is all values of x between 0 and 1 those are certainly there and if you look for what happens when x is negative you get all values between minus 2 and minus 1. So, we say that this is this set this interval union all values between minus 2 and minus 1, but notice minus 1 is an is written as an open interval. So, the value minus 1 itself is not attained ok. So, here is the the image of this interval under this function f ok. So, this turns out not to be an interval this is sort of a, a, a union of two different pieces. In the earlier example the the image of an interval just turned out to be an interval itself ok it was just the interval of all numbers between the minimum and the maximum. So, in other words there are no breaks in between. So, somehow that is the key intuition to keep in mind. So, why was this property true for the first function and false for the second one the key thing which made it work is what is called continuity 
the fact that the graph of the function did not have any breaks. Okay. So, informally continuity just means that when you draw the graph of the function f, so like the very first graph we drew something like this, the graph was just drawn continuously, there is no break in the graph itself. So, this is an example of a continuous function as opposed to the second graph which look like this and this is an example of a discontinuous function and in fact we often say that the discontinuity is at the value of x equals 0 that is sort of where the break occurs. Here there are no breaks at any value of x. So, the key property of continuous functions, so continuous functions are, are sort of very, very important, they have a lot of uh, very nice properties and one of them we have just seen which is that if I take an interval of values of x, the image of that interval under this function f will again be an interval which uh, will be all y values lying between the minimum and the maximum. Okay. So, here is in fact the statement that we have for a continuous function. So, let us write this out again. So, here are key properties of a continuous function. So, let f be a continuous function. So, let f from r to r be continuous and let i be a closed interval, let i be a closed interval. So, let us say it is all now there are two important properties. Number one that f attains okay the first property which somehow looks uh, rather obvious, but uh, there are examples, easy examples where we can see it may fail. So, the first thing says in fact there is a, a, a value of x at which f attains its maximum and a value of x at which f attains its minimum value on i. Okay. So, we do have a maximum value and a minimum value, let us call these m and small m. So, that is fact number 1 and fact number 2 is the thing that we just said that it attains every value in between. So, let us also say f attains every value between m and m. on the interval i. So, there is a maximum value which it attains, there is a minimum value which it attains and in fact it attains every single possible value between small m and capital M. And both these statements are uh, very easily false in, in examples of discontinuous functions. So, we have already seen an example where uh, the maximum and minimum value are attained. So, here is the, the function m small m and capital M were both attained when you take the interval to be the interval between minus 1 and 1, but values between every value between the minimum and maximum was not attained. There were values for instance between 0 and minus 1 which were not attained by the function. Okay. So, that is an example where uh, f is discontinuous and the second property fails. Now, let us also look at an example where the maximum and minimum are in fact not attained. Okay. In other words, there really is no maximum or minimum. So, here is one of the, the standard examples. So, we could take 
the interval between 0 and 1, but let us define the function first. So, let us take the function f of x to be just the function 1 over x, but of course, in order for this to make sense, I cannot allow x to be 0. And so, at x equal to 0, I redefine it as 0. Okay. So, here again is a piecewise defined function. If x is positive, what you get is the graph of 1 over x, which looks like that. If x is negative, again it is this graph, the same thing 1 over x and 0 alone is something like that. Okay. Now, let us do the following. So, at 0 the value is 0. So, again let us try and take an interval. So, let us take an interval let us say between minus 1 and 1. So, I will just take the same thing as before. So, let us look at the interval between minus 1 and 1 and now we ask what are the values of f in this interval and we, we observe the following. If you look at the y values, then they keep getting larger and larger and larger. Right? So, they go off to infinity is how we, we often say this. Similarly, the y values for negative values of x go down to minus infinity. So, now if you ask well what is the maximum value of f on this interval between minus 1 and 1. So, at 0 itself it is a 0. So, there is no problem really at 0, but if you ask what is the maximum value well we observe there really is no maximum in, in some sense it is it's like infinity. The value of f is larger than any number you can you can write down. Similarly, there is no minimum because the value of f uh, becomes more and more negative it, it sort of tends towards minus infinity. And so, well, there really is no maximum or minimum in this example. Okay. So, and notice again that this is an example of a discontinuous graph because clearly there is a break at 0. So, we draw the graph really is in three pieces. There is the negative 1 by x piece, the positive 1 by x piece and the piece at 0. Okay. So, this again is an example of a, of a discontinuous graph and one in which there is a, a neither a maximum nor a minimum on the interval between 0 and 1. Okay. So, having a nice continuous function will give you both these properties that you will actually get a nice finite maximum value, a minimum value and every value in between will always be attained. Okay. Now, this, this second property here that every value in between is attained is sort of like the intuitive notion of continuity. It is a, it's a formulation of something very intuitive about continuity that when you draw a, a graph in a continuous fashion, you really must pass through all intermediate values. Right? So, here is the, here is another way of stating this. So, if I have the interval between A and B, so there is a way of, of, of stating the same thing without bringing in the maximum and minimum values. So, here is the statement. Suppose I have a graph of a continuous function and I want to see what it looks like between A and B for instance. So, at A I have some value. So, let us say this is the value f of A. So, that is the y value at A and at B I have again some y value. So, maybe just to make it a little clearer let us just think of both values as being positive. So, I have let us say f of A that is the y value at A, f of B is the y value at B. And so, here is the intuitive notion of continuity. You try and draw the graph between the point A comma f of A and the point B comma f of B. Now, when you do this, you pretty much have to pass through every intervening y value between f of A and f of B. So, these are the two uh, boundary y values and it is sort of clear intuitively that no matter how you draw the graph, you are going to have to pass through every value of y in between these two boundary values. Okay. So, this is sort of another reformulation of the property that we just said that f in fact attains every value between f of a and f of b on this interval a b. So, this is uh, this formulation is sometimes called the intermediate value property or the intermediate value theorem. So, let me just formulate this. So, it is called the intermediate value theorem. says that uh, let f be a continuous function a 
let us say from the real numbers to the real numbers you in some sense you really only need it on the interval a b, but for now let us not worry too much about this. So, let f be a continuous function from the real numbers to the real numbers uh, and let us just restrict attention let us call i to be the interval a b. Then given any value between a and b given any number c any uh, number real number c where does c lie it is a number between a and b what can one do. So, let us take a number c between uh, sorry c is between f of a and f of b I should have been careful given a real number c between f of a and f of b. So, it is a y value between the two boundary y values what I can conclude is there surely exists a point on the graph. So, let us call it x naught there is an x value at which the function takes the value c. So, given any number c between f a and f b uh, there exists an x value let us call it a, a real number x naught x naught between a and b such that f at x naught is exactly the value c. Okay. So, this theorem here is called the intermediate value theorem. Uh, the proof uses some very important properties of real numbers and so on. So, we would not get into the, the formal proof itself, but uh, this much should be clear that it is a rather intuitive property of continuous functions somehow capturing the, uh, the feeling that you sort of do not really lift your pen off the paper when you draw the graph from the two end points well going from one end point to the other. Okay. And this somewhat simple looking uh, property has lots of very interesting applications and uh, we will look at uh, at least a few of these applications next time.